So hello everyone. Welcome to this new video. So in my previous videos, uh, we have uh, discussed with the very important uh, concepts related to the exam point of view. Two of the uh, CMOS logical combinational logic circuits that is the two input CMOS uh, uh, NOR gate and two input CMOS NAND gate. And also in my previous video, I have told you about how to solve the uh, Boolean expression when the Boolean expressions are given, how to uh, uh, draw the equivalent uh, CMOS logical circuits using PMOS and NMOS transistors in the pull up and pull down network. We have seen around four questions. So please, uh, those who have not watched that video, please, uh, my request is to please go and watch that video because that is very, very necessary for exam point of view. Because whatever I do in these videos, right, in this subject, VLSI design and testing, uh, it is uh, mainly based on exam point of view and uh, how, how the exam question could be appearing and uh, how, what, what is your VTU syllabus. Okay. Uh, because this subject is a very vast subject, okay, there are many, many things to be learned, but uh, uh, they have included only a small part of it uh, in your video syllabus. So that's why according to that, I'm going, okay. So uh, the, these were the, some of the concepts which I've covered in the previous videos, okay. Uh, before that also, we have covered around uh, uh, many concepts related to PMOS, NMOS, transistors, switches, uh, inverters, combinational logic circuits, everything we have covered till now. Please, those who have not watched it, go and watch it. It is available in our playlist okay so today we are going to continue with the uh, one more concept uh, related to first module that is pass transistors and transmission gates okay let us see what are these pass transistors and transmission gates with respect to the cmos logic so now first let us see pass transistors the strength of a signal is measured by how closely it is it approximates an ideal voltage source okay in general the stronger a signal, the more current it can source or sink. Okay. Source or sink is either uh, transmitting or receiving. Sinking means the current would be, would not be flowing ideally in a circuit. Source means the current would be adopting uh, as the voltage increase. Okay. So the power supplies or rails, that is a uh, VDD or ground, are the source of the strongest logical ones or zeros according to the given pattern of the circuit. Okay. So these are some of the introduction part which you need to be knowing uh, if, uh, before studying about the pass transistors. So now let us see. An NMOS transistor is almost a perfect switch when passing a zero and thus we say that it passes a strong zero. Okay. As you know that the NMOS transistor when it acts as a switch, it is almost perfect switch when it uh, has a logical zero. That is whenever the NMOS transistor is a logical zero, we can say that the transistor is in off, off condition. Okay, when the transistor is in off condition, you can say that it passes a strong zero, the switch is open and there is no current flow. That's why it is considered as logic zero. However, the NMOS transistor is imperfect at passing one because we know that NMOS transistor is in off state when it is, when it is in logic zero and the switch is open. But in case if it is one, then the switch is closed and the voltage level would be getting varied because the current flow would be uh, fluent in case of the circuit condition. Okay, so the high voltage level is somewhat less than the VDD. We say that it passes a degraded or weak one. Okay, so an NMOS transistor always passes a strong zero and a weak one. Okay, that is the strong signal of uh, logic zero and the weak signal of logic one. Similarly, for PMOS transistor, it is reverse of this. That is a PMOS transistor passes a strong one but degraded zero. So you see here the gate condition. This is our NMOS transistor and PMOS transistor. According to the sources I have given here, this is NMOS transistor here, which has source, gate, and drain terminals, as you might be knowing. So whenever the NMOS transistor is in a off condition, the switch is open here. That is G is equal to zero, and input when it is zero, the gate would be equal to one. The switch would be closed, and output would be strong zero. And when the when G is equal to one here. When input provided is 1, uh, the switch is closed and the output is degraded 1. Okay. Yeah. In case of PMOS, it's just the opposite of that. You just observe here. When the switch is closed, uh, the G equal to 0. Okay. The input is 0 and the uh, output will be degraded 0. But when G equal to 1, input is 1 and the switch is closed and the output is strong 1 in case of P switch. So when an NMOS and PMOS is used alone as an imperfect switch, we call it as a pass transistor. Okay, so now pass transistor means 
an imperfect condition. For example, if you see here, for NMOS transistor has this set of condition, right? But what if NMOS transistor passes a degraded zero and a strong one, or the PMOS transistor passes a strong one or and a degraded zero? When that condition applies, we say that the switch is an imperfect switch that is not matched with the particular circuit which is shown in the uh, particular st uh, stage of uh, correction. So that's why we say those kind of switches which does not follow this pattern, this pattern if it does not follow then it we call it as an imperfect switch and we could name it as a pass transistor. Okay. So this was about pass transistor. Next, transmission gate. Let us see what is transmission gate now. By combining an NMOS and a PMOS transistor in parallel, we obtain a switch which turns on when one is applied to gate in which zeros and ones are both passed in an acceptable fashion. This combination of parallel NMOS and PMOS is called as transmission gate. Okay, transmission gate basically is a connection that is PMOS and NMOS transistors are connected in parallel or face to face to each other. Its main function is that it allows both 0 and 1 to be passed acceptably in the output side. Okay. It does not uh, it does not have any restriction that it, either it is strong 0 or weak 1 or weak 1 strong 0. It allows both 0 and 1 simultaneously based on the input provided. Okay. So this was about transmission gate where uh, the PMOS and NMOS transistors are connected in parallel, interconnected. So this is the symbol here you see here of transmission gate here. Okay, this is G and G bar. These are the two inputs provided A and B. Okay, so these are the conditions for tra transmission gate here. When G equal to 0, G bar is 1, the switch is open. When the switch is open, input provided is 0. When switch is open, input is 0. The output is strong 0. And when uh, switch is closed, G equal to 1, G bar equal to 0. And input is 1, the output is strong 1. Okay, it does not have any weak weak impact because it allows both zeros and one to be passing simultaneously in the strong condition. Okay, so this was about transmission gates. You see here in animation also they mentioned here transistors can be used as switches for past transistors the condition which I have already told you. Okay, the symbols and the conditions when the switch is open and closed, the how output is strong zero and degraded one case of uh, NMOS and in case of PMOS the output is a degraded 0 when uh, input is 0 and the output is a, de a degraded a strong 1 when the input is 1 in case of PMOS. Also for transmission gates you see here this is the case uh, it allows both uh, strong it allows both strong 0 and strong 1 signals to be passed simultaneously uh, provided uh, the input based on whatever the input is given okay this is the symbol of uh, transmission gate where uh, PMOS and NMOS transistors are connected in parallel to each other where we have uh, connected the uh, drain and the source terminals here. Our drain and source terminals of uh, these two transistors are interconnected, are uh, joined and the inputs is named based on that. And then this is the uh, conditions provided. So these are some of the symbols of transmission gate here you need to be making note of. Okay. So pass transistors produce degraded outputs. Transmission gates pass both 0 and 1. Okay. As I've told. So, you please note it down. Next is about tri-states. Okay. What are these tri-states? Let us see in detail. Uh, what are the functioning of these tri-states? And we have one more tri-state buffer. Okay. So, this is a tri-state tri buffer where we are having a, this works as, the, as a typical NOR gate when provided the inputs and the enable. Here, we uh, this is basically not two input. But we consist of an input and an enable based on the input and an enable provided, you would be getting the functioning of the output. Okay. So, tri states where we are having three basically three inputs. Okay. Two inputs, but one more input is additional because we have enable. So, that's why it's a complement is named as an enable bar. So, three main terminals here you should be mentioning in the tri state is the input which is named as A, one is enable, and another one is enable bar. Okay. This, these two are in, uh, inversely proportional to each other. Whatever the enable is, when enable is 0, this would be 1. And when this is 1, this would be 0, provided the with the input condition. Okay, Whether it is 0 or 1, it is uh, dependent on the user. So, when enable input is en is 1, the output y is equals to the input a. Okay, Whenever the en is equal to 1, 
the whatever may be the value of y that would be equal to a okay but when enable is zero that is when en equal to zero y is left floating the z value okay the z value defines either zero or one it could be either zero or one based on the input provided it would be getting varied but when enable is equal to one the value of y is equal to a okay you see the truth table here see when enable is zero a, a input a is zero the y is z here because it can be be varied but here also if it is a zero one enable is zero a is one again it is z but enable is one and input is zero so whatever the value of a is there that would that only would be equal to y here so zero zero and again when enable is one and the input a is one the y also would be equal to one so these two conditions you need to be uh, seeing very carefully in case of a tri states okay so this was about tri state buffer okay so this is basically a functioning of a tri state buffer you need to be knowing but under this tri state we have a very important concept related to tri state inverter okay this is very very important okay so this they might be asking let us see what are what is this functioning of a tri state inverter tri state inverter tri state inverter produces restored output okay it, its main functioning is that it produces the restored output okay uh, why it produces a restored output because the whatever output is stored in the uh, y right for example when a, uh, input is a output is y that y would be stored and uh, when the input varies the y would be again uh, changing its values right so that changed values in order to get back the tri state inverter is used where the output uh, values are recollected okay so that's the functioning of tri state inverter it violates the conduction complement rule because we want a z out z output means varying output that is the restored out okay we cannot have a fixed output either we should be having a varying output or an unstoppable output Okay, so this is the circuit diagram of a tri state inverter. Please note it down here. See, uh, we, we have used here two PMOS transistors and two NMOS transistors, and we have three connections here one is A, enable, and enable bar, where uh, the uh, input A is connected uh, through an inverter here. If you observe carefully, here we have a PMOS transistor and an NMOS transistor here. This is PMOS and NMOS, where the gate terminals are. Uh, connected here and we are give, uh, getting a common input A and uh, the enable and enable bar are given through the PMOS and NMOS transistor which is extra okay so where from the middle we are checking the output Y so this is about tri-state inverter and uh, this is the switch switch working condition of a tri-state inverter the current flow they have mentioned it here beautifully when the switch is open and closed and for both the cases that is when enable is 0 the output Y would be equal to Z and when enable is 1 that is the switch is closed the current would be flowing here so the output y would be equal to a bar okay so these are the some of the circuit symbols of tri state inverter so please note it down so that's all for this video guys so in this video we have discussed uh, some of the concepts related to tri states tri state inverters and uh, transmission gates pass transistors and we have seen the invariance with the uh, input provided with all these conditions okay so these uh, are the some of the theory parts which you need to be knowing there which they might be asking because it is there in the syllabus so that's why i am doing it okay so that's all for this video guys uh, in the next video we are left with only few concepts now of this uh, first module that we are going to wind up in the upcoming two videos so stay tuned and uh, like share subscribe to our channel and keep supporting and uh, keep uh, uh, commenting down for more such videos for the upcoming future okay so all the best for your future and uh, this subject videos are very important guys so please uh, watch it as much as possible share it with your friends that's all thank you